what we're trying to put together, shiurim on the cycle of a Jewish life. So the, the, the shir coming up soon is going to be talking about halachas, halachas that get, are connected to pregnancy, childbirth, birth. So, and he, he's going to be coming very soon. So I'm going to fill in in a topic that, uh, that very few people talk about that's in that, in, that, in that field, and you might find out some interesting information. And then as the, as the two or three days we sit together and, learn, and study, we're going to learn about uh, a child being born, a child be, having bar mitzvah, what is the uniqueness of a Jew, he, he became a, becomes a mechoyi of mitzvahs, and we even go to the last year on Sunday, is somebody coming from Postal, Iowa, his topic is <coughs> old age, what halachic issues uh, halach, and we, we spoke about different topics you should speak about, perhaps hearing aids, uh, uh, all these uh, issues, and it was his choice. <coughs> you've, you, 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 you've, uh, uh, euthanasia? I don't know. Uh, it's going to be about the halachas of Shabbos. Uh, I, I suggested maybe a cane. It's his choice. I gave him choices that he should speak about. So I'm going to fill in now for 10, 15 minutes until the next rabbi comes and talk about something what happens when a child is born, and it might sound to some people like, like uh, I'm a male chauvinist, but I'm going to quote the Gemara, and you'll see that we don't behave that way, right? We are nice people. The Gemara Masechus Nida Daf Lamed Aleph Amit Beis, the Gemara says like this, Neyma Amra Teira, why does the Teira say that Zachar, after a, ch- uh, a woman gives birth to a male, to a boy, it's Shiva. She only waits seven days, then she becomes pure again, in the process of becoming pure. On a keva, if she gives birth to a girl, a little baby girl, mazel tov. But for her to become pure again, tar again, it takes 14 days. What, what's the reason for that? This is the question the Gemara asks. And the Gemara says a statement. Uh, uh, Zachar when a child, a boy is born, hakoyl smechim boy. Everybody's very happy. Everybody's happy. A young child, a boy is born, and therefore mischaretes l'shiva. All the pains that she she just went through, child labor and birth pains and all that. When she gives the birth, she says, "Oh boy, never again, never again. It's too much for me." But when she sees a young little baby boy, she's so excited about a baby boy. Seven days later, she's ready to become. She's ready again to, to. Uh, she's happy. However, in the cave of However, when you see a little baby girl, and then about people are not always not always happy when a, when when the new baby is a baby girl. Sounds funny, right? So it takes her longer to get over it. How much longer for her to become tar? It takes her 14 days. This is the Gemara. It's not Nachman Wong. The Gemara is saying this. Now, why is it that what, what's the logic that a person is happier to have a baby boy than a baby girl? You look a, a couple of lines earlier in the Gemara. The Gemara says a, say, a statement which sounds very male chauvinistic. Ba zacher la'ilam. A new baby male comes into this world, ba simcha. It brings along simcha. Why? Bliss. Huh? Bliss. The Gemara says, listen to this, the Gemara says even better. Rashi says, what's the simcha with a baby boy? A, ba- a boy is easy to forgive. He turns the page quickly. And there's actually a reason why a boy turns the page quickly and it forgives better. The Gemara goes on to say, because a boy always faces downward in, in, in a different relationship matters, and downward you see that you, where you come from. A person is created, other Mauritian was created from a da'adama. He says, what, what should I be, stay angry for the rest of my life? And therefore, when a male is born, when a zacher la'ilam, it's simcha. When the keva la'ilam, if a... a, a, a Female, a girl is born, it's fight, it's animosity, it's anger. So, so the Gemara says that, and therefore the Gemara comes on to, uh, therefore the, the Marsha actually says a beautiful swara. The Marsha says, 
Why is it taka that everybody's happy when there is a boy born? So Masha gives a swear like this. You know that the story of Adam and Chava, when they sinned in the Eitz Adas, Hashem gave the punishment. He gave three, three punishments. One to, the, one to the, the Nachash, to the snake, one to Adam, one to Chava. And you learn Chumash and Rishas, it's fascinating, the split, and why they each got their punishment. But what is the punishment Hashem gives to Chava? The Eitz of Tildi Bonim. So from now on, having children will be connected with suffering. There will be child, child uh, birth pains and raising children. It's not going to come easy. So therefore, when a, this is what the Marsha says. When a boy is born, he doesn't have child, he doesn't have pregnancy issues. He doesn't have uh, labor issues. So we're all happy for him. We're all excited. This is what the Marsha says. When it comes along and a girl is born, we're thinking down the line, hopefully she'll get married, she'll have to go through all this. And that's why there is a, a level of discomfort. Very nice. So, Mazel Tov, we are all very happy. This young couple just had a baby boy. What is the first thing you know that is done to the baby boy? What? So he's giving me the, the hand motions, he says the bris. The umbilical cord. What? <laughs> no. I'm talking about halachically. I'm not, talking about, I'm not a doctor. I'm not going to tell you what you get. Wash him up and all that. There's actually a beautiful sikh from the Rebbe. One second. There's actually a beautiful sikh from the Rebbe where the Rebbe says, we say every morning in the davening, we say, Ashreinu matayv chalkeinu, manoyim goyereleinu, umayofi yurishaseinu. Which in English would mean how, 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 how according as it's written in proper English, if you think about it, Ashreinu matayv chalkeinu. Fortune is our good is our portion. Huh? Yeah. Fortune is our portion. Uh, portion. Fortunate are we, how good, how good is our portion, how pleasant our lot, and how beautiful our heritage. So the question is, what, what part of life is matayv chalkeinu? What, top, what part of life is how, how, in other words, in English, what, what are we referring to when we say, how good is our portion? What part of life are we referring to when we say, how pleasant our lot? And what part of life is how beautiful our heritage? And at one place, the Rebbe says that when a child is born, there are three stages, right in the beginning. There is the, act, there is the child still in the mother's stomach developing, and then there is the child after it's born, but it doesn't have a bris yet. No name. It doesn't even have the chais and kodesh, the, the holy seal. And then there is the child when it's born, uh, when it's when it's after the bris. But even then, it's not complete until the bar mitzvah. The yitzah toiv does not come in completely until the nefesh hakadusha doesn't come into the bar mitzvah until the bar mitzvah. So there are actually stages, and the Rebbe connects it to, to the words over here that there is a stage when a child is born until the bris, nameless without any holy sign, then there is, you got the holy symbol, you got the bris, and you're still not done, you have to wait to the bar mitzvah. Those are the, the, Rebbe, respond, the Rebbe connects it to those three expressions. So anyway, so what's the first halachic issue that you know comes up when you have a boy? We're all excited. So the Ramah, in your, uh, Ramah, now everybody learning your day knows Ramah, right? Ramah in your day, simen reish samach, if you'd base, which is Hilchus Mila, right? So the Ramah says, aha, it's a boy, and you're going you're gonna to fulfill the mitzvah bris. There's something you have to do, you should do before. What should you do before? Nagulasa, you see, this customary, you tell me if the Swar didn't do the same, because the Ramah says this. Nagulasa, you see, it is customary to make su'uda umishta. Su'uda umishta means a feast. A, and a, and a, a l'chaim, the leil Shabbos, Friday, uh, the night of Shabbos, the first night of Shabbos, after the baby is born, nothing, it's not the bris yet, it's before the bris. The Shalom Zachar. What you call the Shalom Zachar, it's, the Ramah says, the first Friday night, I'm stressing the first Friday night because there's actually a debate in Paiskin, what happens if the baby is yellow and the, and the bris will be the, uh, late? 
should you do it the Shabbos before the bris, or should you do it this party, the celebration? Should you do it uh, the first uh, first uh, Shabbos it's born? But uh, most of the place can believe that the, uh, you do it the first Shabbos it's born. So you make a party. Nichnasim <coughs> the Does Sfardim do it also? I'm sure they would. They no, because the Ramah says this. Eh? Of course. Party time. Nichnasim eats a Latina. And they come to the place of where the child is, lit oin sham, to taste some food there. Vuhugam kein sudas mitzvah. This has a din of a mitzvah meal. Now the Arach HaShulchan comments, he says, I'm getting a little, my brain is twisted here. You start off saying you make a suda, mishta, that means an elaborate meal. And you finish off saying lit oin, taste something. You don't taste an elaborate meal. Is it a taste? And we know today's days, we, there is no whole meal. There is uh, chickpeas, there is nuts, there is basic things, lit time to taste. So Nash, nash. Not nash, there's significance. I'll tell you, because you said nash, I'll tell you there's significance in both of those foods. There's significance about the chickpeas, as the chickpeas is round, chickpeas is a food that, the beans is a food for mourning, and we're mourning for the fact that the, the, the baby just lost all its Torah in the mother's stomach, yeah. the Malach taught it all its Torah. Mm -hmm. There's significance in everything. And there is even a joke attributed to this, that Yiddish chickpeas is called Arbus. The Yiddish chick chickpeas are Arbus. Yeah. Some people say we eat the chickpeas because it's connected to the Pasig, Harbe Arbe Ezaracha. I will multiply your children by Arba. So it's a play mm -hmm. of words. So you eat symbolically, you eat arbus. Okay, but, but it's actually, now nuts, it says because nuts is specifically in Torah, in, in the Chazal, there's a comparison between the egois and Mila. So we, 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 there's, there's a custom to have nuts. Anyway, so that's, here's the first place where we see in Shulchan Aruch where it's mentioned that you make a meal, you make some kind of festivity on the first Shabbos, that the baby is born, the first Friday night. What's the reason for this? What's the reason for the celebration? So there are three reasons for this celebration. Reason number one, it's a suda sayda. First of all, Frankie, we don't, we don't really need a reason for celebrating, right? No. no. <laughs> it, it, it's a suda sayda, a Thanksgiving meal. What are you thanks? What's the Thanksgiving? Baruch Hashem, this child went through turbulence. Nine months of labor, nine months of developing and coming through uh, uh, childbirth. So many things can happen, Rachman Chas So many things can happen. So and he's safe and sound. It's a Thanksgiving meal. Now, it's not the bris. The bris is a mitzvah. This is a thank, thank you, Hashem, for allowing this, for giving us the opportunity. The problem with this is, the problem with this reason is, Akiva, is if it's a Thanksgiving meal, why do we only do it for a boy? What? And if a girl, a baby girl, Moshe, I mean, come sit down. If a baby girl is born, you also have to thank Hashem for a safe delivery. So there's a second reason. The, re the second reason is the Drisha says that it's actually not a Thanksgiving meal, it's a meal for mourning. As I mentioned before, the, the, the baby in the mother's stomach, the Gemara says that a Malach comes and teaches the baby Kolotar Kula. As he goes out, of his, as he gets born, it gives it a flick on the nose and forgets it. That's what the Gemara says. So we feel we're, we're here mourning them. Oh, you had an opportunity. You learned all that and you forgot it all. But even this reason, mm -hmm. even this reason, some place can question because who says the girl that is not taught Torah? Maybe for that reason, even a girl should have a, a part uh, this, uh, this this Friday night, even though learning and teaching Torah to a girl has limitations. I'll be Allah. Shalom in the cave. So then there is a third reason. <laughs> the third reason is based on the Medrash in Parsha Samar. The Medrash says in Parsha Samar, he brings a mushal, a parable. A parable was the people. Uh, there was a king, and many people came to visit the king. And the king said, chutzpah, you guys are just lining up to come to see me, go straight to the top. I want to make, I want to make a rule that before you see me, 
you have to visit the queen. After you visit with the queen, you come to me. And he says this also, regarding the mitzvah of bris milah. Going straight to the top, getting that, that mitzvah. Slow down. We need, a, we need to slow it down with the mitzvah of Shabbos. First. <coughs> Shabbos is Shabbos Malkisa, Shabbos the queen. The buildup of, of celebrating Shabbos. And now you go do the mitzvah of bris milah. Obviously, that's, that reason only applies for a boy. So why do it on Friday night? In Paiskim, there's a, 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 a challenge. What happens in the, in the late Friday nights, when Friday night is very, very late, it would be much easier to make a Kiddush in the morning, Shabbos in the morning. So if push comes to shove, some Paiskim allow it. But the, why even Friday? Why don't, why don't we do it on Tuesday? The baby's born on, on Sunday. Let's do it on Tuesday. So here, too, there are a few reasons. Reason number one is, the Truma Sadeshan says, practically, you look, like a businessman in the middle of the week, he can't, fi can't find time to come, can't celebrate. On Shabbos, everybody is home. If everybody is home, that's when you could get everybody to come to this and celebrate. That's one reason. Another reason, the Drisha says, on Shabbos, is, as mentioned before, it completes, it makes it ready makes the baby ready for the mitzvah of, of, of Mila. So therefore, we specifically uh, celebrate it on, on Friday night. But then there's a beautiful, beautiful other reason. Why is it that we find that people go travel? Today, tonight's your Shabbat. You know how many hundreds and thousands of people went traveling to the Rebbe? What, what do people go travel to at Tzaddik? Because we know that we are not picture perfect. And we know that a person who is not clean its facial features are also, it, you can tell a tzaddik. A tzaddik is beautiful. A tzaddik has chen. So people who go to a tzaddik to look, steer at a tzaddik, somebody knocking me kol chen, clean from any sin. This child is clean. Is knocking me kol chen. So we celebrate. We make a celebration as if we're going to a tzaddik. This is, a tzaddik. This is somebody who is pure and fresh, this is the celebration of the, of the Shalom Zacher. Now, as mentioned before, what you, what you eat, so it's customary to have arbus, chickpeas, uh, and then beer, all these type of things. I read lately a very interesting thing that the Rebbe once said to a group of chassidim, I didn't know that, but this, that the Rebbe once said to a group of chassidim, you know, we have such, such beautiful nigunim in Chabad, why don't we set up, uh, Moshe Shalev is, is a musician, why don't we have standard nigunim that we sing for Riz, Chasna, Bar Mitzvah. In other words, there should be a, a, a standard text. Which, which songs are, uh, are, should, be sang, should be sung at which what, <coughs> uh, events? And they were debating what song is for a bris. And they, and they, and they discussed the song, Ve'ata, Marta, Hetiv, Etiv, Imach, Vesanti, Ezarach, Gechel, Ayom, which Hashem promises Avram Avinu that I promise you that your children will be, will multiply like the, like the sand of the Yom, the sand of the sea. Right? So that, Lubavitch has a niggun on that, so I'm just telling you an interesting piece of information. One other interesting story, there's a story of the Kotzke Rebbe. The Kotzke Rebbe, you know, in the history back then, the Hasidim and Mesmagna were always uh, head on. So there was a, uh, uh, somebody who grew up in the Mesmagna family, and he left the Mesmagna family to come close to the Kutsk and Hasidim. So the people from, the, from his family got a sign from the Rav, got, got a signed paper from the Rav over there saying, Keep it over aim! You have to honor and respect your parents, and your parents are the ones that raised you. Your parents want you to be this way. You got to come back. So the Kotzke Rebbe answered so sharp. He says, "Okay, keep it up, is a fair, a fair claim." But the Gemara says, "Shleisha shutfim yesh ba'adam." The creation of man, there are three partners. There is the man, there is the woman, and there is Hakadosh Baruch Hu. So you are representing two of the partners. I am representing the third partner. And for the third partner, I can tell him to stay here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. So this is 
This is the first thing to inflame the parents even more. Kutsk is very known to be head on sharp. They said it as it is. They didn't like any bluff. I just heard lately somebody telling me if you follow the Kutsk theory, you're not even allowed to have silver plated stuff in your house. Mm. Why? Because silver plated is fake. It's not real silver. They were straight as is, no sugar coating. All right, so this is after a baby is born, after a boy is born, specifically a boy, we do the Shalom Zacher. Then there's another party, another party which is, uh, which is uh, customary, even before the bris, and that is the Vachnacht. Anybody know what the Vachnacht is? Some type of night. Vachnacht. Weeknight. Vach actually means to stay up. The night before the bris, is it, you, the night before the bris, there is custom to stay up and study by in the, in the home where the baby is. So it's customary that the father stays up and there's specific designated uh, parts of the Zohar, of different parts of Torah you read, the night of Vachnach. Why do we do this? So it's also two beautiful reasons. One reason is to enhance the, cup, the honor of the, of the mitzvah of bris milah. So the Medrash says that the Ebi Hashem turned to uh, those who had issues with Bnei Yisrael, and he says, look, at the, look how precious the Jews are. Not only they do a mitzvah, but they do the extra, extra on the mitzvah. The, these things, bris milah, it hurts. And they're celebrating, and they're doing a simcha. So Hashem says, I'm going to give you another happy occasion to deal with. So uh, to prove that, we, we, we are marv of the simcha, uh, another reason to party the night before. Actually, it's brought, another reason is the night before the bris, to bring down, to draw down the kedusha of, uh, kedusha of the bris, kedusha of Torah in this young child, so we designate a, dedicate a time the night before to study Torah. The most common reason which is given and there's a story from the Baal Shem Tev attributed to this, too, is it's a shmira, it's a protection. Because the night before, you heard that? The night, be- uh, <laughs> the night before the bris, the Sutton, the, 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 Sutton, the evil, evil Sutton, tries to make sure that in any way, shape, or form, the bris should not happen. Because he knows that that's, that's the final seal, that this guy is a member in, Jewish, in the Jewish society. So he, there's many sakana, but sakana, the shmir to protect the child, we stay up and learn Torah. So these are the two unknown so much like the bris. Everybody knows the bris. Everybody knows the sunnah of the bris, the celebration. But the two, two small parties that perhaps happened before uh, is not so known, and these are the reasons behind this, and let's... The Abishah should give us all time, to, uh, reason and time to celebrate more and more. Um, what about, what about the, the...